Hey everyone, and welcome to the best of three Call of Duty Esports Podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Salvation Elite to my right is Batch underscore BO3, and to our farthest right, per use, is none other than Rex Shady Nero. And guys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, you know how this goes, but we have a ton to talk about today. This weekend was insane, of course, major two in the CDL for stage two, and uh, talk about a wild weekend, Toronto making the miraculous run, we had some collapses, we had some devastation, some drama, and some potential roster changes in the mix, including Florida, but before we get to any of that, and a spicy conversation with I hold shift on the pod of course i've got to ask boys what's going on well josh i am feeling like a cow in a tornado and i'm just mooing around in circles I'm <laughs> and i'm losing control i don't know what's going on it feels like my insides are being ripped apart and then all of a sudden i spit up some cud and it starts flying around in the air and then it almost hits me in the face almost but just the, the the dynamics and velocity of my body and the cud just were like at complete good <laughs> equilibrium that we just never came in contact, and I would felt pretty lucky. <laughs> but, Sam, how you do it? But you're still in that tornado, though, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're you take your, you know, take your wins where That's you can calm, get them, you know. know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest thing ever. You take your wins when you can get them. The cow's just going. Like, the cow's well, still in the tornado. I'll take. That one. But at <laughs> least the cud didn't hit me in the face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he survived though, obviously. You know, uh, I'm part doing of a good. warrior. You're doing, doing good. good. Doing nice, good. nice. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean <laughs> There, there, this is the this is the pack show, and hopefully we can keep this thing, you know, in that hour thirty <laughs> ish mark. Is that fair? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. see. But you know that 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 nice and edible pet mark there. Yeah. But uh, before we get anything else, you can watch on YouTube. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen sure on can. Spotify. You can drop a comment on YouTube, which is much appreciated. And also, you can drop a five star review on Apple Podcasts. And today, huh. Sam is reading a beautiful review today. What you got for us? From Optic Fan One Two Three. Uh oh, very classy. And the title is Just Like Breathing in Kleenex. Oh, very, very fitting. Very, you know, it gets me wondering what this is. Yeah, very fitting for this weekend. This podcast is what I look for in a podcast. The best Call of Duty esports podcast. Mm. They cover everything I, I look for. And Rex, how you oh, doing, baby? Nice. <laughs> How you doing, baby? I'm doing great, man. <laughs> I'm feeling like a cow in a tornado spitting up cuts. Just in the face, man. Yeah. Go through wow. the whole again. Counting the doves, but uh, what a nice little review a, there for Optic nice One, Two, Three. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been wild. So yeah. today we're going to do no quick question because this is going to be a long show. We're on a little streak of no quick questions, but oh, okay. we have a ton to get into. So without further ado, let's get right into the news Push of the, the week. Let's hit it. The button. Call of Duty News of the Week. Yeesh! Wow. I mean, should we just kick it off with the spicy <laughs> news of the week? We're going to be talking a lot of potential roster changes, but this one the is spiciest. actually happening, and it's spicy. So we got to leave, so leave with a little something fun. Yeah. And uh, the news of the week, we're kicking it off here. Slacked has been benched by Florida and they're trying out some potential replacements as we speak. Yeah. It's been wild. Obviously, you know, Florida didn't have the best of weekends. They didn't no. play bad, though, by any means. They they beat LAG, and then they end up losing to Seattle. Um, in that Seattle match, Slack did have a very unfortunate control match. He went like, I can't remember. At one point, he was like 4 and 15 or I so. Think so. It was a pretty mm. tough to go. I mean, who's to say that that was exactly what ended up being the reason why? Yeah. But he didn't have the greatest of series nonetheless. And uh, either way, Florida decided that they'd be better off um, potentially trying out some other options. This was a team that we, you know, highlighted the previous week as a potential team that could have a roster change. And here we Fair are enough. one week later. It's happening. So here it is. I guess the other piece of news is that as far as we know, the one guy they have so far tried out at least supposedly, is Havoc. Yes. He was spotted in a lobby with the squad and with the coach in a potential scrim tonight. Um, CDL Intel posted that. And uh, Slack said that they he, they were supposedly going to be trying out a handful of different players yeah. to, uh, to be on the squad. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what are your thoughts on this? Where are you at with this? First of all, do you think it's the right choice? Rex, lead the way. 
Um, yeah, I, like Slack had his moments for sure on the yeah. squad. He was Especially great in control. in control. Yep, exactly. He was great in control. Um, but I mean, it was lackluster in other game modes almost like too many times. Yeah. And it, it just hit a point where it's like, I mean, clearly Florida needed to do something different. Who's the one guy, like, Skies was popping, Awakening, I mean, is Awakening, right? Right. And then and then Neptune, which is kind of like their, you know, semi shotsy thing. Right. Which, you know, I I have my hesitancies with, with Neptune, but he's still new. He's still kind of don't know what to expect yet. He has growth potential. We're slacked. We've seen him for so long, and he wasn't quite showing up. So it seems like it has to be him. Um, I mean, my... Predictions. I think I've said this already. Is is John? I, like I, I, I don't feel in my heart of hearts really? that the guy. Even after the havoc news. Even after the havoc news. I mean, havoc could be it, but like they got rid of him for a reason, right? Yeah. They didn't even like, like, it, like they got rid of him for a reason. They didn't even have to get rid of him. They just did. So clearly, they d- didn't. You know, something wasn't working with it. Um, yeah. And like, even if Havoc comes back, the their mill might still be some sort of bad blood because Havoc and Slack weren't the ones with beef. Slack wasn't even on the team, so clearly there was some other issues with other people or whatever it might be. For sure. Um, but I mean, my heart of hearts says John seems like the right pick to go in there. He's got that okay. veteranish, got that sort of like level of respect, yeah. but he's also Seen the just success been in the AM it. scene. Yeah, he's been killing it in the AM scene. I don't know if they want another younger guy who's out of control like the, their team that like everyone's cracked and young right like they did they bring they're all very for a reason. stable like they're stable like steady like and you could find those other players i guess in the in challenges but john just seems like i don't know just feels like that guy to me no i agree i mean the temper the john's temperament kind of like is like the lead the lead yeah. from the front but like he's not like overly like yeah. loud like, he fits into that team a lot i think exactly uh, yeah i do yeah. agree with that sam what are your thoughts yeah i i'll be honest i'm not like a hundred percent. I don't like, I, I know we talked about them having a change, but I feel like this is a squad that could have figured it out. Like, I feel like this could have, this could have been like an ultra with squad with, with slacked. Like, yeah, you, you know what I mean? How like, long, how long is that going to take to figure I out? I guess, but like, I, I just said, but like a thousand times, um, <laughs> self-awareness looking at Vance. I mean, Vance is the ultimate example at this yes. point. Mm-hmm. Do we see more? grace not grace but more patience with these players that we know have the potential i mean there's two sides of the coin i'm yeah. sure we're going to talk about this probably later as well but like bands th- they did make a roster change they did they and did. so in, you know it's kind of hard not to look at toronto like true. they they they, they drop methods they bring an mm-hmm. insight and then that was what unlocked Bance mm-hmm. potentially and so it's like you true. could see it in in both sides of the coin Very i think true. you know that breathing technique Something mm-hmm. crazy for bands, yeah. but th- th- we'll talk about that a little bit later. At the same time, I do agree with that. That you know they still had some potential, but mm-hmm. like the inconsistencies were there. I think they needed to make a change. I'm totally fine with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think that Slack can be a really important contributing player on a on a team that has three very established talents. Like like you know Slack could be major maniac on phase last year and like still be a very very Absolutely. valuable player for a team, but. He, right now, you know, Florida needs the the superstar slayer. They're trying to find that, and mm-hmm. I don't, like, like, SMG, a superstar slaying SMG. Mm-hmm. And they just don't have it right now. Neptune, I mean, at this point, Neptune... That's what Neptune were, was supposed to be. But right, he and he, and he, hasn't, he hasn't got to that point yet. No. But, I mean, the thing about Shotzi last year, I mean, they won CDL Los Angeles... And Shotzi played really, really good in that series. That was their first win. That was on land, the last land event of the year. That was on March 7th, 8th, that weekend. So that was about six weeks into the year, five, and a half, five six weeks in the year. We're past that at this point. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not convinced that Neptune is going to be like, you know, they were hoping he'd be Shotzi. Mm-hmm. I think Neptune's a solid player. Yeah. But they need that. That's why I think they needed to make the change to try mm-hmm. to find that high upside player. That's why I'm not necessarily in agreement with them picking up havoc mm-hmm. because we've seen now two years of havoc on bo4 modern warfare where he definitely was not the all-star smg slayer mm-hmm. that they would feel like they need right now no but when havoc was on the team they were winning 
Like they were playing pretty well. Like they were a scary team. Yeah, for sure. So they can't for take sure. that. Out. Like Havoc played a part in that. Yeah, last year for sure. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you 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 did have Pharaoh when it, on that when team. you had Pharaoh, it was yeah. yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's like you know you had the SMG Slayer, and, <clears throat> and I think that's just what they're missing right now. Yeah, that's why at least in my opinion, I think you I think you're looking at John. But you know I'm not sure if it's it's you heard it here guaranteed first. that John can be that. Saints is interesting. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, can zap, I still think Zapdius is pretty interesting, but I, I don't really know how him and big wakes, uh, situations like it just comes down to who, who are the SMGs that they can try to find. Yeah. Decimate maybe, but you know, we've seen decimate well, now for a while. I don't know if that could be the solution either. So it is a tough situation. John makes a lot of sense. Um, temp tweeted out the bait last night. He was he like, did. it's time with like the, you know, blowing an air off the nose emoji or whatever. And then time. awakening replied <laughs> and then temp replied. I was like, uh, and then the temp world? was on the flank. was like, I mean, they were like, nah, like for real, like, are you, are you joining mutineers? He's like, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> but, but, uh, he's like, you know, you know, who knows, <laughs> but, uh, we'll see. I don't think it'll be temp, but that'd have to work out a trade. So I don't know. Other thoughts on Florida. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's say they bring in Havoc. How do you feel? I think I Florida are going to get better no matter what. Um, really? Just because, yeah, you get the new vibe, right? Okay. Um, I think, because the, like, they clearly know there's an issue. Now they're taking, like, this is like, you know, the extreme measures of fixing that problem where it's like, this is going to do something. I don't think they're going to get worse. I think they're just, they're going to be better. I don't know if it's going to be to the elite level they want it to be. It could be a little bit of honeymooning for a little bit, or they'll get better to like a little, like, upper middle tier but to like climb to like those elite ranks i'm not sure yeah no that's fair that's fair so yeah i mean again we'll keep talking about this i would imagine i mean by next monday almost surely they'll have signed the official player i think so so uh, next time you hear from us about this potentially there will be a new player on the florida mutineers mm-hmm. congratulations and it's gonna be really, really interesting so let's let's all give our <laughs> final predictions okay there you go final predictions rex is your final prediction john 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 man too much sense to say too much sense. I I almost think they might just go with the safe move of Havoc. Like they already have him on there. Is Florida uh, known for doing that though? No, no, they're not. They're not. They take risks with their players. I mean, and and they 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 play for upside a lot of the times. We saw that with with uh, Pharaoh last year. Neptune. And awakening. And awakening. And, awa- and I have definitely awakening. Yeah. Um, Neptune. John feels. I would. I would say. I'm going to still give Havoc the most likely option. I think they're going to give him like a week or two and go from there. I think mm-hmm. it might be like a longer term trial than like a shorter term trial. It might be like a we try out Havoc for the first match on a, and then see what happens because he's already on the team anyway. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to go Havoc, but I think John's probably the most likely not currently on the team. So all right, mm-hmm. um, let's talk some other small news here before we get into our our interview with shift and then we're doing some really fun stuff later in the show with uh some talks on uh some roster change potential some rating or rating all the rookies and we're going to be doing a little like group type predictions mm-hmm. too as well so it should be a fun time um all right we'll talk viewership real quick thoughts on the viewership for stage two i think at some points it's a little bit lower it peaked at one hundred one thousand viewers yeah Definitely not anywhere near the average, though. The no. average, there were some matches where it was like hovering around like pretty low. Yeah, 30, 35, 45, 30, 35. Mm-hmm. Uh, sub 50s. Um, thoughts on like overall stage two CDL where we're at right now? Yeah. Um, I, I guess you can say like it's, it's good. It's can seemingly be growing. I don't know the uh, official stats from, from last year if like, yeah, it, it's grown tremendously or not, but. You know, 101,000 peak viewers. Uh, that was the Optic vs. Rocker match, of course. Um, we had like 90,000 for a, one of the New York matches. I can't remember which mm-hmm. one, but um, yeah. So like we were like, the top matches were all like in the 80,000s yeah. or so. Yeah. The, yep. There's still the still the Optic. I mean, obvious. It's going to happen. Obviously. It's going to happen. Um, but I, I'm not like sad or mad about it. I think it's going to keep increasing. Um, but I... D- I guess it would have been cool to see, you know, maybe like the 150,000 mark, obviously, but that's, that's kind of, you know, hopes and prayers. I know, at that man. Point. I would love to get to that point. If we could consistently be hitting 100,000, like, mo- oh. like a, a lot of matches are at 100,000, yeah. not just the biggest optic match of the whole weekend, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that'd be nice. I, but I truly believe once it hits back to land, those, those, those views will start. It's going to gonna matter. Yeah. It's going to matter for so, sure. Hopefully. Well, yeah. 
No, yeah, I was going to say, hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later. Don't know if, you know, Land is coming back this year just for champs or, you know. Again, the champs return. If it, if Land returns for champs, that's mm-hmm. going to be pretty freaking hype. I I, that's awesome. going to get people to watch. That's going to be some crazy viewership. Rex, mm-hmm. thoughts? Yeah, I think, yeah, that was what I was going to say. I think Land is going to be, is going to be a big spike in viewership. I really think the issue is, and we talk about this all the time, they need a better funnel of funneling people into the competitive scene. Like you oh, see yeah. with Overwatch League, like you see with like CSGO, League of Legends, like they need a even good league play. Valorant is like people play that game and it, it directs you to like, you got to get competitive. Like that's the most fun part. Mm-hmm. Like that's what everyone sure. does when they play League. No one plays, I mean, you can play League casually, but in the back of your mind, you're always thinking about, I wonder how good I'd be in competitive, you know? Mm-hmm. And like they have a really good system set up. And I think COD is the same way. It's like, it it still set itself up in such a casual way where it's like it 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 doesn't promote or doesn't give you a huge endorphin rush of going and playing competitive and doing well just the way it climbs i think just yeah, the funneling system of fair. it is what's hindering the viewership yeah, yeah. I, again continue i think but i think as a whole this year the the community seems more engaged this year than it was last year i think like more united like as a viewer as an audience it almost feels like like when you when you see like the content on YouTube and uh, staying in tune with what's going on and uh, engaging with the pros, it feels pretty engaged this year. I think that's yeah. a positive yeah. sign for sure. I will I say too, so it, too yeah. it was really cool. Like Hundred Thieves, they had like their content creators watching the matches. Yeah, yeah. it was lit. They, 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 like uh, Noah J was watching it, streaming. That's it. cool. And I think Courage was. I think he was watching it. If I if he wasn't, he, yeah, he might, he might have that's been. really so, like, cool. That is cool to see. Like. Obviously, these teams that have put in 25 mil have a stake in how good the you know viewership is. So might as well have your big content creators stream it on on Sunday, you know, when the matches matter. So I think that's cool to see like the content creators of the teams. Um, yeah, so maybe we can see more of that. Yeah. I mean, like Aiden joined New York exactly. and like, you know, uh, uh, Legion just joined uh, Mutineers. Yeah. So, so, so like, obviously, the like. Not not every single team has these big content creators, but I think moving forward, we're going to see probably part part of content creators' contracts will be, hey, you need to stream matches at least you, you know one day of the weekend. So that mm-hmm. I think that'll help too, yeah, just as cool. we keep going. So that was cool to see though on the hundredth part, for sure, for sure. So um, I guess other small news things, thoughts on the stage. I guess this isn't necessarily news, but more of just like a small topic for that's semi related. Thoughts on the format so far. Um, for the CDL thoughts on the stage and uh, thoughts on like the potential roster move discussion that mm-hmm. that Hex was having on Scump. The, yeah, yeah with Scump on the Optic Pod yeah about roster changes mid stage yeah let's start with that yeah so do you agree with it for for the roster you're talking yeah about? I, mean, I guess yeah. are you on are you a pro for roster changes mid stage or not I mean I guess. Before the podcast, I like haven't really even really thought about it. I'm like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but there was last year, wasn't there? There were those periods. There was roster lock, wasn't there? Period. Uh, or, 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 I'm not or sure. Was it not last year? Not no. There's a roster lock at a certain point. Yeah. But, like okay. that's only one time per year. Okay, gotcha. Um, during the CWL, there was always roster lock during tournaments that's and like right. leagues and stuff. Yeah. Which uh, I guess it, it it does make sense from like you 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 pick your team and your players are. This stage, and you should stick with it for the stage, but then it's like if you're just shocked, it, yeah. If you're just like the you know, rocker, nothing's happening. The rocker, and you have this chance to bring on Standy, right? You why go not from, let you them go from zero and two to exactly. literally top four with a so, chance at top three? Like. So it's hard to say, like, no, you have to stick with that team when it's like something that could be out of their control. You, you know, look at um, yeah. London. What if Alex had to leave? And they didn't have anyone else, and you know all this stuff. I know. Football- so then maybe the, maybe the rule the rule would have to be like you just you, they have to be signed during the, these roster open periods, yeah. but you could still swap out your subs yeah. during the, the the series or during yeah. the stage. Yeah, I, I yeah I'm more so on that. Like I don't like that you can just randomly pick up just this these players and just jump in the middle of a stage because then it's like, well, like. I don't know, because you have like that honeymoon period and it's like teams prepare for these teams and like put in a lot of work. So like if we look at, you know, LA Thieves or Rock or whatever, people are going to be like, well, they have just completely new players now. Like everything we studied could not even be important anymore. Right. So yeah, it's like, I mean, oh, like, they were you, terrible new, at hard point, but now York, it's like... And you're New York and you play three checkmates against LAT, not realizing that that is, they, LAT South is now the best checkpoint 
or checkmate, checkmate team. <laughs> Checkpoint. So it's in like, the league. <laughs> yeah. So like, and like one roster move can do that. Like, and like, I, I don't like it. It should, you should make them play the whole stage with the roster or at least, and they can sub in the subs that they have whenever they want. Cause they're a sub and like, yeah, that's, you know, information for other teams. Like they already know that's a possibility. Um, but just be able to be like, oh, we're going to pick up this guy. It's like, uh, okay, we, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah he's I mean, super good. Like, we, from didn't, a selfish we perspective, don't know how to prepare for I'm him. I'm all down for news at any time during the stage. But, like, you know, I, I totally get that. But it, it, it is a good time. Um, yeah, no, for sure. So um, other, other small things. I think we're going to save the New York stuff for the actual, like, New York combo. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we can talk about the stage stuff when we get to after the conversation with Shift. So yeah. I guess we can just rock it and roll it, and we can roll rock. our conversation with I hold shift. This is this is a it's it's juicy. It's very, it's very juicy. juicy. It's gonna be a good one. I think you guys are gonna very much enjoy it. So without further ado, let's talk to I hold shift. Yeah. Let's get it. Welcome to our interview with I hold shift. Let me tell you, it gets crazy in here with shift in the building, and you're not. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. And here we are. Of course, we got the man, the myth, the best of three legend. May, may as well call the thing the best of four nowadays. We got I hold shit <laughs> on the pod. And uh, still, my word, of course. Still the only guest. The only guest still. He is <laughs> the, the four timer. And uh, I mean, the legend continues. Shift, how are you doing today? So I, I, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. I hope you guys uh, are great. doing well as well. Um, <laughs> do you guys name the best of three like in, in relation to like the COD format of like best of three maps? <laughs> That's oh, what we're going for. We, we're it's, going it's for like deep. The, I, yeah. yeah, it was like the play okay, on like the so best what of you three can series. Say is you guys are still the best of three with the one map advantage that Atlanta didn't get. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's shoot. it. <laughs> now we're talking. All right, there all right, it right. is, right there. there. There's the content we, we need. Got our yeah, map advantage oh my here. word. I mean, that's. I think that's about right. But it's been. Uh, let's just say it's been a crazy weekend for you yeah. and for really the whole COD community when it comes to the scheduling and how much COD we've got to watch yeah. the past seven days. It's had to have been a little bit insane, and uh, that's why we had to bring you on because we were like, dude, we we had. We don't have enough eyes. You know, we need we need the the people who had the front row seats to this. And uh, Shift is the man when it comes to that. So, um, dude, we first of all, I think the people will love to hear and from from straight from the source. I think we just kind of want to hear like maybe a few of the the big storylines from this year from Challengers, especially this weekend, and uh, the biggest takeaways from this past like week or so from Challengers and heading into the next the next week or two. And uh, kind of your thoughts on like the, the few biggest topics you can kind of run with that as you wish oh, and sure. go from there. So, so what's the, what's the challenger scene looking like right now? I think that this moment in challengers is the most pivotal one when it comes to what the year is going to look like. And okay. I'll kind of relate to what happened last year in modern warfare, where in North America, which is what I'm sure most people are listening are going to want to talk about, at least in some right. form roster mm -hmm. mania every single week right i mean i think the average lifespan of a roster in north american challengers is like a week and a half so that continues to happen but at this point in time in the season is when you start to see the teams that have not made many changes you're built by gamers uh i think you could probably throw even teams like easter into the mix now that they've played mm -hmm. for an entire stage together will there there be those changes because the frustrations are starting to over surmount the, the results that we've seen we saw it with triumph a couple of weeks ago built by gamers i think was going to be pushed to the edge this week you know they made grand final so i think they're going to be okay but this is a very pivotal time because at this yeah. moment you're going to start to see teams either say that what we've been trying to work with for the last couple of months is not working so we have to go make those changes or they're going to sit there and say that, OK, the results that we're finding over the course of this last open and the upcoming elite qualifiers on Friday, that will be what we remember for the rest of the year. That was when we see teams like Carnage from last year stick together. Triumph in the same rate, for the most part, was kind mm -hmm. of the same way in Modern Warfare. So this is a very pivotal time, I think, when it comes to challengers overall. So I'm interested to see what sticks and what doesn't. And if it is something right. that has been sticking together. Is it monkey glued together or do you just find a piece of scotch tape to hold up some of the problems? That's <laughs> right. I think where some of the problems have kind of occurred. So uh, that's kind of where my mind is when I'm looking at challengers right now is the results are the results. I mean, it's going to change every single week. It's very difficult to keep up with, like you guys mentioned. But I'm largely looking at the rosters that have been trying to make it work 
Will they see enough results in the last week and a half to yeah. continue with that? Or will they go make changes kind of like the CDL teams are doing right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based, so based off this weekend, um, in your opinion, what, what teams do you think will stick together? Like, do you have any thoughts on, on certain teams or what teams might split apart or what that could look sure. like the upcoming few weeks? Absolutely. I think you have to first foremost look at Europe because they're the one region that largely okay. likes to stick together. There have been a couple of changes, but your two finalists this week were the new Elevate roster, which previously was passion from stage two. They had the flawless run through the group stage. They make it to finals, but get 3-0 swept by Oregless. They meet up in the grand finals. No roster changes for either of those two teams. Some of the only rosters actually in Europe that were in the playoffs or stage two that did not make any changes. Um, and it was very convincing for what is now Elevate, which is awesome. I mean, I think overall, mm -hmm. you love to see the amount of organizations that are coming back to COD. You know, you've yes. got Elevate, you've got Team War. For sure. Um, that's great. Love to see that in Europe without question. Love that. And I think both teams look pretty solid when they played through the grand finals. We didn't get much of a chance to watch much else in Europe based off the official broadcast. So results will kind of speak for themselves as far as some of the new teams that were put together. For sure. But in North America, kind of taking the same storyline. I love the look of this new Triumph roster with Exotic in the mix. They looked mm. great. Yeah, looked what in the world? Incredible. Uh, and Built by Gamers, I still feel very strongly about that roster as well. Well, even though they ended up losing, I thought they looked really, really solid through the run that we had. We kind of watched with them, which was their lower semis, lower finals, and then eventually their grand finals loss. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I guess. Yeah, for, for the viewers out there um, with the rosters, I guess if, if we could like talk with the players who are on the teams, because I know a lot of people who are watching this are like using this as like their chance to like, keep up with who's on what team. Sure. So, yeah, if we can just continue like, to keep using the players names, I think that'd be awesome because it'll help people a lot. I mean. Yeah, the the Elevate roster, I mean, that's Biz, Denza, Hixie, and Weeman. Yep. Came out on top in Europe, like you said. And, I mean, for Bids, who's kind of been, like, through the mix the past, you know, basically since the start of the year, trying to figure it out and trying to come get back on top after the Singularity split. Um, thoughts on that roster? Love them. I, I think that... Um, and actually, Bids had to send me a message because I've been continuing to tell the story of Bids from like last year when he was running mostly yeah. main SMG throughout the entirety of the year. I didn't realize he actually ran main AR in World War II. I, I mean, I didn't really pay attention mm. to much of the open mm. scene wow. when it came down back there. But he was a main AR player in World War II and kind of a flex player when it came down to when he played at Black Ops 4. Um, so for the fact of him running that AR flex alongside Wee Man, who's running main, they have the ability to pull bids onto an SMG and still do just as well as he did all last year with an MP5 and Modern Warfare. So that's awesome. I think them being having the ability to go to a third SMG and have a very talented player who can do both is a huge advantage for them overall. Not so that there's nobody else in Europe that can do that because there are plenty, but you know, in my mind, I'm thinking of bids as a main SMG player, man. Right. Like I, I didn't <laughs> even know. So that should say a lot. I think in its own right, that fact what he's been able to do on the sub from last year. So yeah, as I feel well. very strongly about that Elevate roster. I think it's really encouraging to see Wee Man doing as well as he's been doing because for sure he's one of those players that I feel like does not get the glamour that the European scene has traditionally brought to other players. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see how that develops moving forward with, with the European scene because they, I feel like they have, they're a roster that's built, they feel like they're a roster that's built to last. Feels and that so, way. Yeah. yeah, and so it'll be interesting to see if they can make a run here moving forward and like and really keep it going after already having some success these past few weeks. So um, I'll be interested to see that for sure. Yeah. So on, I guess on the NA side of things as well, then, um, which roster do you feel most confident that's going to stick it out for the next few weeks? Is, is it Triumph? I think for both of the organizations of Triumph and Built by Gamers, it's not necessarily the players, but it's the managerial and coaching staff that's behind those two organizations. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've spoken a lot with the Built by Gamers guys and the Triumph guys yeah. from the organizational standpoint, and they're all about trying to promote consistency, not just for their own product, but also for the players as well. You know, as long as they feel confident to bring somebody into the picture, that has to be someone that you're okay, you know, painting that picture with. It's not just one of those, right. you know, quick Kodak snapshot, shake it and you're done. No, you, you want to try to paint the Mona Lisa, especially if you're Triumph, who are the reigning champions in North America. So... For royalty, I don't know about the Mona Lisa, kind well, of overrated, yeah, yeah, in my no. opinion. Barely <laughs> <laughs> even a smile for crying out loud. I know, right? Come on, man. <laughs> Trust me, I've seen Bash Smile. That guy looks much better smiling than the Mona Lisa does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, for royalty in general, the two main components of what Triumph has been since the get-go, they have found great options with Mayhem a couple of weeks ago and then the recent edition of Exotic. Now, 
To be right. fair, they were listed as Triumph plus Exotic, so yeah. they may mm. not officially have brought in Exotic, but it feels like it's going to be a pretty for sure thing. Um, yeah. And for a mm. team that's been the number nine team in North America in every single qualifier for the Elite so far, this finally feels like the roster that'll get it done. And that's weird to say because at the beginning of the year is royalty general Dave and Standy. Like, yeah, that, how did that team not make it into stage one? Right. I, yeah. that, holy cow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> when you say it now, it's like, holy. literally, it's actually wild. I mean, what, what were your thoughts on them? And like, why didn't that team work? I have no idea. I mean, again, because we didn't see them in the elite stage one. I think we yeah. only saw that team play once or twice, even through in the, the cup? cups that we were hosting yeah. on my streams. We, I mean, they barely made top eights in the oh, opening part man. of the year. So like, it, I don't know. It Jeez. just must have been something that was going on because, you know, when you consider it, it, maybe it was just the conversation between Dave Patty in, in general, like they both are stapled main AR players at the core of it. Maybe they couldn't really figure out how to use one of them as more of that kind of aggressive flex role, especially when the M4 was in, which was at that time. Maybe there just wasn't that one guy to kind of step up because in that run yeah. when they were playing with that roster, like it was a top 32 finish twice and one fourth place finish. Like that's not very good considering the roster no. that they had. So hmm. it's very puzzling to see that that roster didn't do better than it did. For sure. That's really, really interesting. So I guess just in the sake of keeping the conversation moving, I mean, Sam, do you want to fire away with like our kind of like the next transition here? So yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I didn't know if Rex wanted to do the next one or not. Oh, the or oh yeah, Sam, or yeah, Rex, fire yeah. away then. Um. Okay. So I mean, so if we're looking at you guys, you really caught me off guard here. I really don't know what <laughs> I want this. Sprung the trap. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you, you got your I mean, I was going right? to go with what amateur players do you think are going to be okay. mo most likely to be picked up? I feel like I ask you this every time, but I feel like it's one of the most interesting topics. Like, who yeah. is like your now that Stanley's been picked up, he's always been your number one. Who's the next? Who's your new guy? Guys, I'm not going to lie. This show might be like the elixir of challengers, the CD. Dude. Oh, man. We've talked about <laughs> Paul. I we've know. We've talked about Venom. We've talked yeah. about Stanley. Like, we exactly. mentioned this on a podcast a few weeks ago. We were like, dude, we have been on fire with talking about some of these AMs. We were <laughs> like, actually crazy. So, I mean, you're going to hear it here first. I guess, yeah. so. I guess we're going to figure it out. The person the you say is Next going pro. is going pro. I, you, know, you, should just say, I mean, you should say your own name. I, I, mean, I have a name in mind who I think is going to be the next person, but I want to hear what you have to say. I feel like I need to whisper this. I All feel right. like we've really kind of set this up. Yeah. If it if it's not Sib, who is it? Mm. That, right? That's who is who bad. would be next? I mean, well, I mean, Havoc, right? I mean, but that's not Havoc. Right? We, <laughs> we, we, we can't talk about that. He's he's a challengers player, kind of, right? Yeah. I mean, he played a couple of events. But yeah. I feel like it's gotta be Sib. And you know, it's tough because I had this conversation with a number of other people last night with Mayhem about like, why is it that players that were pro that are doing very well in challengers are not getting picked up again? And a lot of it is a lot of it is because they're not new. Like yeah. Mayhem literally made the joke, like I should just go change my username. Yeah. Throw, <laughs> throw 18 in my clan tag. Oh, they can use they can use that CDL formula that they put out today. Yes. <laughs> Get that you new username and then boom, you're going yeah. pro. But he literally true, did it. He was like, if I just stayed really quiet and just made up a new name and put 18 in my clan tag and started running with people, like yeah. that narrative sells more as a newcomer to the scene than one than one of someone who has been there and been pretty successful, mind you, in, in the pro league, to go to challengers then come back. So it's all about that freshness, to give a fresh look. And I think a lot of oh. that has to do with we only have 12 teams, so, you yeah. know, the friendship league is For always sure. beamed upon. How true that is, hard to say. But the fact of the matter is, people know what Mayhem has done uh, you know, at the pro league. People sure. know what General and Exotic have done at the pro league, what Fellow has done at the pro league. Nobody yeah. knows what Sib's done yet. No. So like that little bit of curiosity, I feel like definitely feeds the cat. Oh, for, for sure. sure. It's just that little extra narrative of upside that you can throw into it. Right. And you're like, what if they're simp? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And yeah. that's Absolutely. all you got to say. And then yeah. boom. Or what if they, now you all have to say is what if they're standy? And then and then now you've got you've cool. got the conversation. Well, you've seen it be mm -hmm. successful, too. It's like people, people keep bringing in these new guys like, wow, right. it keeps working. It's working. We haven't really right. seen someone bring an event where it's completely like turned around a team yet. Not saying it right. can happen, but we haven't seen it yet. So it's not proven. 
Sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe the Bants narrative now will will help those pros. Like, you know, okay, maybe there is some upside with guys mm-hmm. being able to turn it around because Bants' turnaround this weekend was unbelievable. Unreal. Mm-hmm. Unreal, and so maybe that could help the you know some of those veteran pros that are in the AM scene. But um, Rex, Rex, which guy were you going to bring up? I mean, I'm thinking. I mean, I think I said this on the last pod or something. I what, think Hydra? John. Oh, I think John. Well, Hydra too, but I don't I think kind of other category for me. I mean, he's oh, yeah. he's yeah. signed to New York. <laughs> like it's going to happen, right? It's right, right. right. Yeah. But like John, I, I don't know. I feel like he could really fit into the Mutineers roster. That's all I'm saying. John is okay. my guy for Mutineers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, thoughts on John the MC so far? At least to me, he's looked very, very looks good. Really good. He has had moments where it's like, dude, John is back, back. <laughs> but you know, we we talked about this. With, I talked about this a lot with Visions. When we do it on the Diffuse. We talk right. with other Shout people. Out the Diffuse. <laughs> Stop. We just do this. <laughs> Golly. dude, you um, have to go and check it out. Right. That's all I have to say. We have fun. People. Oh, yeah. it's a good time. I mean, bro, uh, it's, it's the best show. produced show on the internet. Well, we try to do our best with what we have available. <laughs> but thank you for it's the guys. Yeah, um, of course. For me, whenever I when I was talking about this with visions, I said, John and Easter need to win stage two mm. and he's ready to go. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. That yeah. that was where I was. I was like, if if he wins stage two and plays great throughout the playoffs. It's time for John. Yeah, man. Need to see, I need to see him win something. I don't know what yeah, it right. is. It, there's, it's so superficial. There is nothing behind that statement. But I just feel like I need to see him win and take over while winning because that's what it really kind of comes down to. I feel like when it's all right, yeah. this guy is next up. You know, Sandy this mm-hmm. year to be fair in challengers has not done that, but right. he Even did the that in modern warfare finals. Like, yeah, he yeah. was my MVP from that grand finals for sure. Mm-hmm. And we've seen right. Venom do I mean, it. We've seen Paul do it. So Sib has just done it with Fantastic Four. And, That's and right. Jaza didn't get pulled up until he won. That's fair. And so then, I mean, mm-hmm. maybe that was what pushed him over for you know for LAT to mm-hmm. kind of make that he move won, too. And he was the sub already, so like it was right. Yeah, easy to that, pull that, that out. helped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean oh, that should sure. have happened from the get go. Like Jaza, he had a great finish to the year with Optic Gaming LA, yeah. and mm-hmm. he's looked consistent yeah. throughout the year so far. In challengers, I, I the fact that they've continued to kind of play around with the role changes, I was like, get Draza in there, man. He's so <laughs> yeah. darn yeah. good. I'm so glad that yeah. they found success with him. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Even with John too, though, like there, like we we're just saying, like there is that like stigma of like old pro. He probably can't do it again. So John's like, yeah, different. Like you like said, he, like unless I don't know. But but like like to what Shiv was saying, like unless we see him win dominantly, they may not want to pull him up again where it's like he has that stigma to him so like that could be the only reason why he doesn't get yeah. pulled up is yeah, all I mean, I'm saying. I mean even a guy like Exotic I mean he's he's won all so many tournaments last year and now they're back to winning again this year right. and but like he's I mean he has no chance to get pulled up like I mean like realistically I, what team's going to pull him up for a sub this year no way I, I mean it doesn't right. feel likely at least that's the conversation sucks. For I think a lot of those former pros that find themselves yeah. stuck in yeah. challengers, and to be fair, going back to the John point, his exit from the pro league was not the same. No, as that someone was weird. going, you know, getting dropped and going down to challengers. Yeah, right. true. Very so true. his story is a little bit more unique. His exit than I was feel a, his like exit a, was a top six placing at COD Champs and Bo Four. Right. That yeah. that was his exit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. I mean, you you want to put that one into effect? That generals was top four, so was Mayhem. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that that's weird. insane. You know, that's that's, that's wild, and you know that's yeah. the unfortunate thing about last year for those two specifically is they just they sat on the bench all year. They could they couldn't do yeah. anything else, right? Yeah. No, so no. that's why I, that another reason why I'm candidly a big fan of that Triumph team is I really want to see not just General Mayhem come off of a year of essentially not playing. And yeah. then start to win again. But you've also got Exotic now potentially and likely a part of that team and Royalty, who I still think is being slept on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's actually wild for yeah. sure. I mean, so, okay, okay, real quick on the final of that question. We'll spend a few minutes talking about challengers mm-hmm. as a whole. Um, who are your like top three to five? Not like most likely, but who you believe right now are like the most deserving players have a chance to be a sub. Like a sub on a pro roster, you mean? Not yeah, on like a pro starting- roster. Or yeah, to be a player on a pro roster, to be to interchange into a starting lineup. Oh, okay. So, I mean, throwing away the conversation of Havoc and Hydra, who they both right. seem pretty yeah. likely to be picked up eventually uh, mm-hmm. by their, their parent teams. Um, I, I, I like Sib, I think, first and foremost. Yeah. 
do not sleep on Papa Kiz. I, <laughs> dude, Kiz Kiz man, it. he was, dude, a, he was a freaking force this last weekend, man. Every man. single clutch moment that BBG needed to stay in the tournament came on the backside of a Kismet play. He looked wow. undeniable. When they've been so consistent weekend. this year too, with with him on yes. that roster, like he, they've yes. been so consistent. Yeah. So yeah. I I could definitely see that as a potential option. I like I like that one a lot. Um, All right, I good start. I still have a lot of favor for Zap. Um, I think yep. him and Venom yep. together were why Venom was looked at so positively. Um, yeah, because him and Venom together were were ungodly Nasty. as an SMG duo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be interesting for Thief. Um, beyond that, I, I think that you have a couple of other players that have been that, that need to come back. I, I'm a big Jordan General fan. I think as a main yeah. AR, he understands that role better than a lot. It's just the problem of he plays main AR and there's not a lot of openings for main ARs right. in his ADL. Yeah, he, um, it seems like a next year type expansion team pick I up think there. So. Yeah, I, I would for have sure. to figure so. Parasite's another one of those guys that I look at. Mayhem's another one of those guys that I look at. Uh, I think as Saints, far as if I were to give you decimate. five decimate you know i i like what i've seen from him so far this year especially with alongside that fantastic four roster at the very end through that stage two run that they had yeah um but i still think that there's you know he kind of more runs that objective style play so he doesn't find the spotlight as much as someone who will go rogue and just shred mm. you know like sim right. would essentially do as the ar flex and that um mm. or, or like draza was essentially doing kind of for a moment there when he was playing as the other smg in that duo um so that as well but you guys also mentioned john i i, I want to see more from john but i think the upside oh, is man. there's so is many undeniable. guys this sucks i know yeah. we need expansion so many guys teams. are getting royally screwed we need expansion oh, absolutely teams. i, mean, I know it, look talk about it for a second a, pretty much a full eu challengers team at one point in time just won against the I Atlanta know. phase and yeah we're not even talking eu uh-huh. right now we're talking na they, which is north insane. america don't even get yeah. me started on apac dude pred is unreal <laughs> he is <laughs> great unreal he and a full, a full eu team just won the yeah. major two like yeah and within like two years ago all four of those guys essentially were in an open position in some form yeah. that's yeah. wild to think if we if we have four expansion teams next year you can you can fill four rosters real Easy. quick with Easy. with competitive teams yeah it, it's wild mm-hmm. so all right are like so let's spend like three to four minutes talking about just like challenges as a whole and, and yeah. thoughts there's the same you were gonna rock that no, one. No, absolutely. Um, I know we uh had some tweets, you know, just about like uh what you know what could boost you know viewership and and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if he, like you knew if like, it's like possible to like get more integration into like the main CDL stream. Um, like I, you know, I don't know if like there's any like talks about that or that kind of thing. Like, because I think to us it seems like it'd be cool if, with you know instead of the tenth Hearthstone commercial. <sighs> <laughs> you don't want a fourteenth Hearthstone not, commercial. Not, 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 to say, not, wow. not to say I don't like Hearthstone, but <laughs> how cool would it be to you know replace maybe one of those with some challengers updates? Oh, yeah, what's my sure. opponent going to do? How am I going to counter that, dude? You <laughs> more about Hearthstone the amount of times. I'm a pro <laughs> at, at this point. No, Play but, Hearthstone. Sorry. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess yeah. Like, where are you at with with challengers right now after after this this amount of time? And what opportunities do you see for challengers at this point? in growth wise moving forward how can we make this thing insane challengers has a lot of opportunity i will preface this entire little spiel on the fact that we have to remember how challengers is even formed going back to starting mm-hmm. at black ops 4 because the reason why yeah. i say that is black ops 4 is franchising no more opportunity to go from an amateur to a pro overnight there's no right. ability to do that it was so, only cwl vegas it was the first or, it was yeah, the only one the initial qualifier that was the only time that you could do that Everything yep. else has been locked down. There's no more relegations, none of that. So I look at Black Ops 4 as the starting point of what challengers would eventually become too. And in that year, fair. You're, you don't even have challengers proper. It was just open tournaments that were being held alongside the pro tournaments that were happening. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fine. Awesome. Challengers now becomes official thing in modern warfare. We've got these home series cups that are, again, supposed to be held alongside the pro events. But there's the ability to establish it as its own particular thing where you're going to have a logical seasonal progression. It ends up becoming regionalized and there is a prize pool differentiation, all that kind of stuff. You've got regional finals. Everything looks pretty solid. Okay, cool. Good step in the right direction. Prize pool also unreal at the mm-hmm. end of the year, as far yeah. as what was total being put into the scene. Nuts. Um, That's true. Now you go into <laughs> cold war. This is the first time in call of duty history that I can think of where there is an established second tier that is a league. 
It's yeah. not, yes. it, it, you know, there is a second and now technically you can call it a third tier. You've got right. your, your pro league, you've got your challenger scene, then you've got your open scene behind that where anyone can play. Right. So the ability for them to go to that length in three years is unreal. Mm-hmm. For sure. But I think really everybody who follows the challenger scene is a little upset because there's so much more that could be done to help mm-hmm. that product grow even 100%. faster. 100%. You know, yep. we're on the highway, but we're cruise yeah. controlled at 55. We're not pushing it to 70, which Get is where everyone drives at anyway. 100. Come on. <laughs> yeah. We need the police after us, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, ramp there, it up. The opportunities are endless. Would love to see the same kind of love and support, you know, that Overwatch Contenders gets, not just mm-hmm. off a production side where you've got every region having their own production. That but is sick. Also, a community that knows where to go to to find that information. And then beyond yeah. that, every single team, largely, that's represented in Overwatch Contenders has an organization behind it. So yeah. that makes mm-hmm. identity much easier because oh, you're not so looking at much a team easier. called Elite Two. Like, what the heck is that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that all of that helps and it compounds on the ability to make it a little bit more easily to ex- easily accessible. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, all of those conversations have to go like through a boardroom, like the product of challengers, we're not even laying the foundation. We're still digging the base of what this is going to look like. So, uh, you know, the progress from year to year to year has been incredible. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to go further with opportunities? Like you guys are mentioning commercial spots, an extra tweet during the week, as far as from the COD league official account, this is what's happening. (laughs) That is going to break them. Okay. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, you know, during the open two, if you're the Call of Duty League, do you really want to push viewers away to no, go to sure. a different stream? So that's true. fair. You know, I, I get Very that. I, I totally get that they want to really kind of again, they're building what the COD League even is in the first place. So you mm-hmm. don't want to stretch yourself too thin. You want your concentration to be on what the CDL mm-hmm. is. So largely the fact that there are podcasts like this that are talking about challengers is already more than enough. Uh, Because there's going to be continued support that gets built on year after year after year. So the future is hopeful. I think everyone just wants to see a little bit more, which is understandable. But I would always encourage in this conversation people to look back two years ago to what it was. Because the open amateur scene is already dramatically different than it's ever been before. Well, dude, I'm going bat to bat for you because, bro, every commercial should be the I Hold Shift segment where we talk about (laughs) every highlight from Challengers every single day from the whole weekend and go through it all and break it apart analyze it talk about the stars uh, the next up and coming players and that should happen every single weekend <laughs> what if i told you something like that was in the works Ooh, breaking oh, news man. here i, I love, love to hear that <laughs> not from the official not from the official this oh, event, I, but no, I, yeah I'm, we're hearing that I'm through the working grapevine. alongside a particular account that would be giving that kind of information. Mm-mm-mm. That's what my week oh, is going to be geared nice. towards building for the qualifier this weekend. So Heck you yeah, might see something by Saturday, bro. Absolutely. I think the more, the more official content, the better. And like, oh, yeah. and it's, it's been great to see like CDL Intel really start to embrace it too, with like, you know, supporting yeah. it and retweeting it and doing that. And like, that's yeah. huge considering like so much of the community follows him and like mm-hmm. is there for the, uh, the updates and everything else. So yeah, dude, this was great. Um, it's been awesome, man, and we need to do like a full on podcast at some point here, like, like maybe a special edition, two hour long like challenge, two podcast. hour long party sesh. This is totally unscripted, unplanned, but it was funny. I was talking with Visions, um, when we were thinking about if we wanted to do a show on Wednesday, which is just had two games. We we're like, ah, oh, we really can't really just cover a full show with two games. I was like, yeah, what we need to do is do a diffuse collab BO3 oh. full on major prediction show. Oh, my, oh my goodness. That actually that would be sick. That Let's would be chew so on that for a minute. I think mm. we can chew on that. I'm chewing on it and I like it. Uh, it tastes good. <laughs> I That's a like five it. star <laughs> restaurant right there. That's a steak meal right there. Woo! If I've ever heard one. Jeez. Well, I like the sound of that. I think I like where your head's at. That's that's some good thinking right there. I like but that. um it is it has been real, and I think yes. that's about it for our combo it's for right now. Real. But there's many more to come. And I wouldn't be I would like to go out on a limb and predict that this might be guest number five you're looking at it, right here, it, too. It's so just, there's a pretty good odds of that. Woo. I'm gonna bet the over or I'm the under get, on that. I'm gonna so. give 99 percent chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liking that. So um <laughs> Again, shit, it's been real. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Go follow him everywhere, like I always say. Yes. Down the street at the supermarket. Yes. Uh, especially on Twitter and YouTube and everything and Twitch, because that's the most important places. But um, it's been great. Thank you so much. And uh, let's get right back to the podcast.
Alrighty, there it is. I hold shift. Just killed it, wow. baby. Oh my word, he's what the well of <laughs> knowledge for Call of Duty, and you love to see it. Um, we we wanted to have him on. It was like a last second thing. We were like, "Yo, shift." Like, how about like in an hour or two? Can you record? And he's like, "Dude, I'm down. Let's do it." And we were like, "Cause we want to talk some challenger stuff," and we did not have enough eyes this weekend yeah. to watch. Uh, 400 matches of CDL and, yeah. and keep up with the Open Cup. So yeah. um, it was awesome everything. that Schiff was able to make it happen. Of course, Schiff knows, knows it all. So um, that was great and an absolute blast Thank to catch you. up with it. And not to mention that all this stuff wasn't on Gamepedia, so we didn't have all the info yeah. in front of us, like the top 16 and and top you know eight. So it was like, oh, thank, perfect timing for Schiff to, to make it happen. So shout out, Schiff. Go follow him everywhere. And uh, without with that said, I think we can get into our uh, breakdown of the event. Let's see who was absolute trash this week. Let's go and check it out. Let's go. Trash. <laughs> Garbage. Oh, no. oh man. Oh. Envoy talking trash or not, but, uh, you know, not his best weekend. Unfortunate, <laughs> man. Um, we'll definitely be talking about that in a second for yeah. sure. But let's start off with uh, a few of these teams that I didn't get a chance to talk about on the breakdown video today and just kind of start there. And then we're going to get into some of the rookies and then uh, some of the rankings, some of the rookies and some of the other roster changes as well. Yes. So, all right. I, I want to talk about Empire first. I think they're a Dude. pretty interesting team with their results this weekend and how it went down for them. <laughs> Obviously, they, they ended up falling to the rocker as uh, yeah. most did. And, yeah. uh, if it wasn't if it wasn't the rocker, it was Toronto, and uh, so Rex, obviously you're 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 the Empire guy around here. What are your thoughts on the Empire, man? Um, I mean, if I'm being honest, I mean, if let's, I mean, if we can talk. Well, the Rocker series was insane. Last some last ditch efforts that just worked out. Shotzi found himself. I feel like during this stage in S and D. I not no just like personally as a player I think he okay. leveled up somehow like he gained a sense I of like confidence. Hmm. You oh. said you don't agree? No, I think I agree. I think I agree. Oh, okay, the real yeah. question is what in the world, Illy? Uh, <sighs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if we want to talk about Illy, like Illy is still kind of like riding the wave where it's like it's not terrible but you're kind of expecting more out of him like there's yeah, he's just kind of I don't know, he's kind of free floating it. And it's, right. it's 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 in a weird spot. Crim six, Crim six is very much doing what Crim six does. He's not going to be the superstar. He's not going to make super flashy plays, but he'll you know do his best to get the job yeah, done. He definitely did. He probably played his worst weekend of the year. I I didn't. I thought I didn't think it was very good from Crim. Um, you know they they ended up playing quite a few matches. They played the subliners, the rocker. They played uh they they played phase. They played ultra. And so it was definitely interesting. I mean, where are you at? I mean, like, what are your thoughts on the team now? Like, the potential, think, it was just such a weird weekend for them. I think, I mean, oddly enough, I feel like they're going to be better after this. Yeah. I still have some faith. I, I really got imp like more impressed by Shotzi, just the way... The Rocker series went, and then even in the Ultra, even against FaZe series, like it felt like yeah. no one was really able to keep up with FaZe, but Shotzi started being like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to do what I do best. And Shotzi started doing that pretty well. Um, yeah, I agree. It, Shotzi like really came into his, his own, and maybe he was going rogue a little bit. Like, it looked like he was getting like really mad, like in a scary way. Like, wow, he might just take over. Um, yeah. But it wasn't quite there. He didn't quite have like the team that was able to kind of like stick with him like that. But he was in moments he was kind of carrying. Um, yeah, which man. was a lot to say from him, especially going against Faze and Rocker. Like he had moments of where he was just kind of carrying against teams that were really good. Um, I agree. I agree. I, the X factor. I mean, I mean, hundred percent. Like I said, it's like Illy is just the X factor at this point. If they can get to a point where Illy is, is like what he was at the end of 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 uh, Modern Warfare. Warfare last year, again, mm -hmm. they're going to be a championship team. It, it, it's inevitable, but they're they're missing the extra slayer on the map. It's like one. It's either it's either Shotzi or Hook every every game. One of the two has a good game almost every time. Then the question is, can Krim or Illy? 
you know, be that AR for him. And it, right now, that has not been the case it, on a consistent it, basis from either of them. It feels like Illy isn't having as much fun in this game. Like, it feels like he's just kind of like... Caged? Like, he Maybe kind of caged, but like, he just feels like he's more scared than he is like pumped up. In Modern Warfare, like he was pumped up, he was super hyped all the time. This one, it feels like he's more, he's, he's scared of doing bad. And that I think is what is actually hindering him the most. Right. It's so crazy how bad fourth place feels for Dallas. This is like, weird. you know, they were right there. It's like they, they beat da- Toronto beats Dallas. And you're like, why does it feel like Dallas got absolutely bodied? Because it feels like yeah. they're barely <laughs> eking these wins out. Even yeah. like when they're like, you know, the map is like 3-0 yeah, like or Rock, whatever. Match. Yeah. It, like, it just, just feels like they're just, well, the Rocket match were like, they definitely were just like, they just got by by one, you know, hair of the pube. Like, it <laughs> was like, <laughs> oh my God. not the one pube. <laughs> like, it's just it's like, they're really skating by. Well, then, like, um, but like, when you know how high their ceiling is, too, like, every single one of these players, the pube with the Semtex on the back <laughs> of Priest's head. That's what it was. Wow. That, man, that was brutal <laughs> to watch. Yeah, dude. Literally. Um, anyway, gosh, Sam, what are you saying? I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, I yeah, the, the just the, like the players, they every single one that series was insane. Has our our yeah. high caliber players, and I feel like last year, like we knew Ilya as this like guy that was just like this like weird like he knew all these spots and you know like he like grinded the game and like he just knew what to do at all times. I I I think you're right. Like like in a sense, he feels kind of like. Not cage, maybe, but but like maybe just unsure of where to be, where to go. Yeah. As opposed to last year, like he just knew he, at all times what like what to do. He's questioning himself. I think Could he be. maybe he doesn't know, and like that's his problem. But it definitely looks like he questions himself as what he does. Like he's like, I can't die, I can't die, I can't die. And he's just sitting there panicking, worried more about dying than getting a kill. And I think mm-hmm. that's really what's got to be hindering him. Yeah. Because he has his moments. Like he has like. Like, just by his gameplay, I have moments where he does something. Like, oh, cool. He seems like he's really zoned. And then next, it's like, he's like barely trying to eke a corner, kind of getting scared, holding back a little bit. He doesn't quite know what's going, like, what to do anymore. I agree. It's really hard to pin a finger on it because it's like, he needs freedom. He, just the inconsistency from all the players at times has been really hard to nail down. And their matches have been so close for the most part when they lose. It's like, you feel like they're right there. And, you know, then like you get into that. You get into the uh, the ultra match, and you're just like, man, how is how is Dallas mm-hmm. not capitalizing on these yeah. situations? And um, that control on raid was like Dallas should win this every time, and and you're like, how are they losing this? I know, and, and it, it's weird too. I feel like last year and the the beginning the beginning of of this year, like we knew Dallas as the hardpoint team that knew how to play hardpoint they knew rotations they knew how to play it it seems as of late they're getting beat on rotations constantly they it's they they like don't know how to no, play yeah. like to, towards rotations and i just don't it's understand been very inconsistent to say the least you have all the like these these players are brilliant i right. mean you, you know you think of hugh you think of shots you think of crim these dallas should be the masters of hardpoint and they they're if they win they're squeaking by this the is what's point. so crazy is that it feels like they're playing bad. Yeah. And they're top yeah. four again. Yes. Yeah. So like their like, confidence shows, isn't there. It shows the potential that it they shows, can be the best team in the league. It shows their still. ceiling. They're, For sure. Mm-hmm. Their ceiling is so high. Right. And like when you're inconsistent, not sure of yourself, Toronto's playing hot. They're they're on a fire. Yeah. They beat you. And mm-hmm. then like that just fuels the the ultra flame that was yeah. this tournament. And um, you know, you, when when like Toronto's beating you in like those close controls, um, you know, there was moments where like like Krim got isolated. Uh, it was like he was on B zone, and I remember watching. It, I'm like, what was Krim doing there? Mm-hmm. Um, and he got like picked by someone on basketball, and they end up losing the hill and and like losing the round. You're like, what did Krim just do there? And it's like there are like some moments where like the communication's still breaking down for Dallas at points, and and you know, I think some of that does fall on Krim when it comes to the leadership aspect, and and it does feel like that. That like you know, Krim has been most of this year their most consistent 
player for the most part when it's like yeah. it feels like you know mm. he's gonna have around that one KD. He's gonna be winning his gunfights. He'll be he'll be playing consistently, and you're just trying to wait for you know Illy or Shotzi to find his own and and really become the player that we know they could be. And so it, it, that's why it feels like it's so tough to pin down because it's been inconsistent throughout the game modes on which game mode they're actually not playing well in the, any particular given uh, event. And Who's so, their hype man? I mean, it, 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 I guess I can see what you're saying. Like losing clay and like the energy on the team and kind of like that, that unifier. Yeah, Is but like even on ult, yeah, like Ultra, I think, has like Bance. Like people who just have a little Cammy like, gets hyped. Cammy gets hyped. Like they have a little more like I don't know, you know, edge to it, I guess. Whereas like Empire are very business like, which is like respectable. But yeah. like we've we have we have been seeing Shotzi get more energized lately, at least in the I, cams. Afterwards. That's what I'm saying. That's what like Shotzi seems like maybe he's gonna just start taking on that role. It's like somebody has to be the guy with out of this world confidence and can just get hype. Because like right. none of them really like it feels like, like Hook's, are like Hook's pretty screaming calm. into the mic and like, like Hook yeah. is always mm-hmm. chilled out. Like he's zoned in. Illy has not been playing well, so it's hard for him to get like that. And he's not that guy. Like it's not what he's meant to be. Like he needs the freedom, just free form, and like he can help the hype man do what hype man needs to do. Um, but and then Crim Six is Crim. He doesn't get like that. So shot. It's on Shotzi, and Shotzi was a quiet guy. Here's but a stat. I think it's what they need. Dallas won two hard points this this major out of all the games they played. Yeah, they they beat they, they, they beat Subliners 3 0 and, and they won one hard point off Ultra. And, yeah. And that was and it. Those were both on okay, so they beat Subliners on Moscow. Mm-hmm. They beat Ultra on Raid or on Checkmate. Mm-hmm. Oh no, they won three. They beat Ultra on, on Raid as well. Oh, they, I'm dumb. No, that's wrong. Oh, the sheet's wrong. They have ultra, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. They, yeah. they only want two. Yeah. So like, um, that, and, and like, which is just crazy to me because remember, like, going into this, Dallas weak point was S and D, but like, they were a pretty good hard point team. And then now they're, they're winning S and D's, but they can't win a hard point except for the, the two. So it just, to me, that just, when you have this high caliber oh, team yeah. and not winning hard points. Oh, well, they were undefeated in this major in S and D until they lost to ultra on raid, which yeah. is raid's best, which is their best map by far. Yeah. That, like, this was just and a that very, was a surprise that they were willing to again and that was the other thing vetoes against ultra mm-hmm. they were willing to play raid three times against ultra mm-hmm. that just feels like an ego like mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. like I, I that just feels like a lack of respect to ultra yeah and uh just not believing that they're actually like good because yeah. they had been dominating on raid and like all their game like ultra's been looking great on raid in all three game modes mm-hmm. and then you're down to play against them on raid in all three game modes and then they lose all three of them yeah <laughs> like huh and uh, you're right uh dallas was undefeated in snd they they beat subliner 6-0 on express they yep. beat rocker uh 6-5 on raid then mm-hmm. they beat rocker 6-5 on miami mm-hmm. then they beat phase 6-2 on express yep and then they lost raid to the ultra 6-3 but it's just like a really weird performance for Dallas. So yeah, do you do you take a lot from this weekend for for your thoughts on Dallas? But it's hard to say. I mean, they're it only, is hard to say that like because like like they have been inconsistent right. prior to their so. losses were the to the two teams that were in the grand finals. Yes, and you know, and it, they made top three, and they right. So it's like they still play super high, even in league matches. They still it's so win. crazy how it's bad they feel know, in it's playoffs. Weird, like they're they're getting third. <laughs> it's like you know. So it's like they're really not doing that bad. But like you can yeah. tell that it's not the same. Like it, no. it's not where it could be. No, you can tell it's like they're not. just eking by. Like yeah, against even other teams, yeah, for sure. But once yeah. they get that mojo, that thing that just flips that switch. Every, the game's going to change. Yeah, I agree. They're they're very very close. So, um, let's talk about a few other teams here. We spent a lot of time talking about Dallas, but um, I think it was definitely necessary. So, okay, let's talk Rocker, and we can also throw Optic in there at the same time. I mean, obviously that series was insane, uh, absolutely unreal. Uh, Rocker mm. v Optic, and it, mm. you know it finished in the most unbelievable way ever. <laughs> I, I reacted. To, I was mm. luckily watching live when it happened and I mean, over, yeah. live streaming it, and so wow. I was able to put out that video and. Um, people have been loving watching it, which is awesome. Um, 
one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> let alone yeah, the Ultra was, winning this tournament. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, this tournament was just... And then not to mention there so many round 11s and the Dallas point one against, uh, in the control against Rocker. Rocker and, um, yeah. Let's talk Rocker first. Yeah. They beat they beat Optic mm-hmm. and Rocker, you know, they end up playing quite a few matches. They they uh they beat they lost to Dallas 3-2, then they beat Optic 3-2, and then you end up losing the Ultra 3-1. Thoughts on this Rocker team? Do you feel better or worse about them after this major? Rex, fire away. Um I mean, you got to feel a little bit better, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I think I'm in that boat. I think I feel a little bit like the Chicago match. Any other day, I think Optic wins. I think like it, great accuracy. You can say yeah. you had the ice, whatever, but like that was a pretty miracle scenario. Um, any other day, like and they were up five four, like or that five, three. Like I almost felt bad for Optic. It's like n- op- like five, it just four. to me, I was like Optic <laughs> deserves to win that. Yeah, like they it just was did, but they didn't. So you know, take that at what you Fair may. Play. Right. Yeah. But so like, I mean, and then where does that tell me about where optics at? You know, they played surge and then rocker. Let's say they beat rocker after, yeah. After losing to ultra. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I don't know where I, it's kind of, where do I see optic at? Right. Is what it's going to tell me about rocker. We were talking about this, but like, obviously this is the most unreal. Like if we were doing power rankings today, Mm -hmm. how could you possibly rank them? I don't know. It's, it would be, it would be a pure crapshoot right Mm -hmm. now with like dealing with LA thieves, optic surge, Mm -hmm. ultra rocker, you know, New York. Yep. Um, all of these teams who've now risen up the board, a few have fallen. Like it it gets really tough right now with having to rank these guys. Like, and, and we'll get to that. But, um, I do agree with you that I, th- I do. I think the rocker, like I was going in this weekend, like, okay, rocker prove to me that you can compete at the highest level with the best teams when it, when it's all on the line. Yeah. And they were right there till the end. They did. And you know, their series against ultra was, was definitely close. Yeah. But again, like the ultras for whatever, whatever happened, the ultra just, yep. they figured out how to play this weekend and it, it was unbelievable. And so, mm-hmm. um, I mean, yeah, they end up losing, you know, three one to the ultra after beating them on raid, and they lost a raid control to them three two. They lost express. They lost garrison hardpoint. Um, yeah. Again, the rocker were right there to beat the empire too. They had them. They had them, mm-hmm. and they had numbers going towards a. And then you stick your own teammate, and then suddenly the round flips on his head. So it's like. Uh, that's really really tough. The rocker are going to be a competitive team from here on out, mm-hmm. at least in my opinion. Sam. Yeah. We- yeah. Yeah, to me, I feel like Dallas Rocker and Optic are kind of like just all these weird matches in the that, mix. that that could have gotten gone either way. So to me, those three are are very similar and very high contention to be top three, right? So it's hard because again, do you think of Rocker differently if they lose to Optic on that round eleven? Do you think of optic differently if they would have won? So you, you do, yeah, and you do. So it's like these scenarios, which is insane, which is crazy, which is like, like you're basing it off of optic was up four two three one exactly. So all these things, like I guess, all this to say is that I don't think bad about optic. I don't think bad about Dallas. I don't think bad about Rocker. I think all those teams are have, the league is insane right just, now. To me, it's just the league is stacked. I, I mean. Ultra have has proved that you're just if you fire on all cylinders and the teamwork is there in four v four four in twelve teams you, in the CDL you can win you can win you you basically have two through ten like I think we all think face is probably still I mean, I mean yeah it, probably it, it's insane it's insane but but two through nine two through okay one one through eight one through nine I mean we could see five different major wins. Right. Team, teams win. We still have yet to see Optic win a major, Dallas win a major, Rocker, the Blind is also. It, it's, so it, it, it's just, it's insane. I, it's hard to do power rankings with, with all this stuff. And I was fr- very you frustrated. You can literally make an argument for almost any of the teams for yes. like being two or three right now, which exactly. is pretty insane. I don't know. I mean, on, on a more like individual basis with Optic. Yes. Um, we did see Envoy talking about how he's just, he just does not feel like himself lately. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of comes through when you watch when you go back and watch it. I mean, mm-hmm. Envoy definitely has not been playing his best COD right now, which is 
surprising. It is. And uh, it feels like Scump has been starting to find his own, but at the expense of how Envoy has been playing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to be fair, it, it's going to happen. Somebody has to take a little bit of a hit on team generally each yeah. map. And right now it's been Envoy a little bit more than not. So um, thoughts on kind of the optic roster right now and like their direction, you know, that was, I mean, that's about as tough as loss you can take. And, oh. uh, you, you know, each player had a little bit to blame for it, but like, yeah. how do you blame anyone specifically for something like that happening? Mm -hmm. And uh, thoughts on this optic roster now after, after a situation like that. You need Go some positive it. vibes. <laughs> like you, just, you need somebody, yeah. not not another player, but you need somebody who can just be your hype man. Like who can just be like, you know, like it would be a lot to be a, an optic player. Just right. like the amount of crap I feel like they they go through is pretty oh, insane. Yeah, it's nuts. Like and like so like when they take their losses. It's almost like that now the pressure's on even more and pressure's on even more when you lose when like most of the time when you start losing, the pressure starts getting off of you. People kind of start forgetting about you. People kind of like, all right, all right, whatever. They're bad now. And all of a sudden it's like, well, now it's easier to make this climb. I have the freedom to just, you know, if we win, lose, it doesn't matter anymore. No one cares what optic. You always are expected to be that. Um, and that's a yeah. lot. It's a lot oh, of pressure. Sure. And um, But like, I could see them turning it around. I think they keep yeah. the same squad. Um, but they kind of need to like, in a way, they kind of need to be able to lay low. When, when Optic is at their best, Scump is at Scump's best and, and vice versa. Because mm -hmm. to your point, the energy comes from Scump on that team. Mm -hmm. But when he's getting, when he's getting smoked, yeah. that, that energy is not there. I think you lose a little bit from Bruce in that sense. And then, you know, then you're really looking at Envoy to like really pick up the pace. And that hasn't been the case right now with how he's been playing his role in that team. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets tough. Like, I mean, 100% opt. I mean, Scump is the X factor for that team right now. And you see that in those hard points when Scump's playing well, this team is really hard to beat. And uh, that came through. Like, Formal was doming on that Moscow, but like Scump was playing pretty well too. And, and uh, they looked incredible on that Moscow hard point against Rocker. And like, you go into that map five and it feels like, you know, Optic has a lot of the advantages there, then they, they're up and they have it. I guess a really good S and D team. And so it's it just, it's crazy that that mm -hmm. happened. Like it did. Um, I don't know. Any, any quick thoughts on the, on optics, Sam? Yeah. Another, I, oh, okay, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Um, I guess to me, it, it, it's frustrating when like, it feels like one player, every single match is kind of underperforming. Right, and then Which, one player is going good, doing great. Exactly, it's either Dashy playing great, Formal doing great, Scump on foot. It's one of them. Every so it's time. very hard to get like a good grip of what this team actually is. But yeah. maybe that is what this team is is just kind of not the most consistent team. And so you maybe you can't put them on that top three, you know, status if they're not able to be consistent. When you know though, if the, all every player was firing all the cylinders. They'd be don't like right. But that's the thing is you could say that about New York. You could exactly. say that about Empire. You could that's say that about the Rocker. Yeah, that that's the thing with 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 how competitive this competitive this league is. So if you're not, you can't really be be considered a top team because you're you're just not being consistent. Yeah, that's so, crazy. What, I mean, what, overall direction wise, you still got to feel pretty good about optic. I though, do feel good forward. about optic moving forward. I, I do. I think they're just yeah. I and I think seeing the players' reactions, seeing their tweets that afterwards. That was crazy, by the way. Very crazy. I, I think seeing the tweets afterwards, I think they all are on the same page. They know what happened. Yeah. I, I do have um, high hopes for this team. I think they're still going to go up. Now, you know, if the next stage is pretty similar to, you know, where they're losing matches, like, you, you, you know, getting 3 0 by Florida and uh, uh, who do they get 3 0 by again? Oh, Rocker. Rocker. No, Rocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rocker, Rocker originally. Sorry. Jeez. Rocker, then Florida. Brain fart. If that happens again in the next stage, then maybe you start to get concerned. But this yeah. stage did seem to be kind of fluky for Optic in a way. So right, and like the improvement that they made after that, and and they mm -hmm. played great in S and D in this. I mean, they, they played incredible in S and D mm -hmm. throughout this series. Like they they smoked the Rocker on Express. Yeah, and they looked that's probably the best S and D we've seen Optic play mm -hmm. all year long by yeah. far. And like uh, I really really like their their bomb rotations there and how they were playing for bombs together like really aggressively playing for bombs and getting that down mm -hmm. and I thought they played great there and then again you're taking a great rocker team who's really good at Moscow to round 11 after uh, previously uh, you know looking really really good as well in that series so as a whole I, I think Optic's in a pretty good spot still they're 
I, I mentioned in my breakdown video, they got to work on their map pool for hard points. It, it's if they're not playing checkmate, which teams are banning it against them now, yeah. they, they're in trouble. So it's like they got to work on that map pool. And if they get to that point, they're going to be in a pretty good, pretty freaking good spot. But all right, uh, let's talk about a, Let's just like real quick um, hit on. I guess you just want to head in like the potential roster change teams real yeah. quick. And we can talk yeah. about that. I mean, it's hard to keep this thing short with so many crazy things going on. But yeah. okay, let's talk about the potential roster change teams. These are teams that underperformed towards what they could have done in this event. Obviously, that's New York, LAG, London, and Paris. Yeah. So real quick, let's sort those four teams mm-hmm. from one to four. Most likely to make roster change mm-hmm. to least likely to make roster change. Does anyone have a conviction off the rip that you want to start with? I mean, most likely... I mean, I'd say New York. What? Really? Whoa, really? Hot take. Spicy I mean, fire away, Rex. What are your thoughts? Well, Paris just isn't going to make a roster change. They just they aren't that kind of team. London has already bro. made like a million roster insider. changes. So for them to make another one is kind of weird. Uh, LAG is a team that just the players on it, like they are the type where they just won't do that. Like, they just won't drop each other. Um, and, like, they can't drop Vivid. So everyone else, I think, is just kind of like, I'm guaranteeing you a job if you're guaranteeing me a job. Um, <laughs> that might be a little too far. But um, <laughs> honestly, though, not the worst. Not the worst. That's honestly very possible. <laughs> um, and then New York is the only one that seems like something could happen, especially based off what Clay's been tweeting. Right. Um, and plus, the roster going into it wasn't even supposed to be the roster. And then we get Diamond Con had to come in, and then Asim wasn't even on the team originally. And so New York has something. It's still running with the like substitute squad, right? Like Hydra was supposed to come yeah. in and start. Like this is still technically like the substitute squad that turned starter. So For New sure. York seems like the most likely option. To Interesting. Make. Interesting. I I think I would go. Before I'll, I'll explain after you, I would go New York one, Paris two, or no, I'd go Paris one, New York two, London three, LAG four. Paris won't make a roster change. No, nah, bro. See so again, Weskin was on with Zuma, and Weskin he asked, "Do you think Paris will do it?" And he said, "Yes, for sure." Like he was like, "Yes." Oh, and okay. Weskin would would know better than most I think so. <laughs> about what uh, Paris was trying to do there. Fire's in trouble. Let's yeah. just say that. I, I think fire's gone. And he's been mm-hmm. tweeting some down bad type emojis lately. Like the, mm-hmm. I saw like the char, is that uh, Charmander, Charmander. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it the first char- evolution, second evolution, or uh, third evolution? Uh, good question. <laughs> anyway, Sam, is that your ranking as well? Normies. It was. Yeah, no, I I think LAG is the least likely. I think these players. because the squad vibes. The squad what vibes are there. Saying? And like, I think you can make an argument for them to the way they've played that they can definitely play play better with like who they have. Yeah. Um, that's fair. Paris just just based off uh, Weskin, I think they're the most likely. And then New York just because I don't know how serious Clayser was about him taking a break. I he could just be in a bad I mental think state. He, I think okay, with that tweet, I thought I, I interpreted that tweet as he's going to take like a 4 or 5 day vacation. Like okay. uh I'm getting out of New York I, or Dallas. I'm okay. going to go like on a vacation for N- a few days. Nothing like a Break Cod call of duty. Break. Okay. I thought it was just like a let's d- get just, away from it for a second. Just, just, just get away. Okay. That was my at least. That was how I interpreted. It. Is that how mm-hmm. you interpreted it? Uh, no. I well, I didn't know. Like, I, I, I didn't know if he was thinking like Call of Duty because like with the whole, it was just weird because he like made it seem like his team was just doing like consistently bad, but I didn't see their team as doing that. I thought, Obviously not. Not, I thought, not I, until the last two matches. I thought, I thought they just had a really bad major. So. I you 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 may be right where he just needed just a break for like a week you know yeah. just 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 take a week off. Um, I really hope so because I, I I think he's he's an incredible Black Ops Cold War player. Like oh for sure yeah. he's, he looks really good. Looks really good. So it's just we'll they see. can't get them all going at the same time. It feels it like. is hard. And then of course you know you you, you get this insane talent Hydra on the bench. What do you do? Do you try to try him out for? Diamond, Thumb, diamond, Mac, Mac maybe. Um, so, ah, gosh, it's it's hard. Yeah, it, it's it, tough. It really is. London, you've already made so many roster moves. Do you do another one? Right. That's why it feels a little unlikely. Mm-hmm. But like they played 
not good no. <laughs> against LAT. And, mm-hmm. and we haven't even talked about LAT yet, but like, you know, you just, it, I really thought they were going to win that. I yeah. really thought they were going to win that going into it. They lost three, two. Mm-hmm. So I don't think they're going to like full tilt right away, but you know, they went own one in this tournament. They yep. got knocked out um, by LAT. You know, and it went game five. It was close. Like, uh, it's just hard to say. They, you know, they won an apocalypse hard point. They won, then they won the uh, Miami S and D. Then they get reverse swept. So it's like, mm. that's tough. That hurts. Um, I doubt they would make a change right away, like in the next week. But yeah. I could see it within the next two, three weeks before the next major. Yeah. Th- thoughts on London Rex? Yeah, they've just made a million roster changes already, and like, there's a lot of turmoil that's been going plaguing that team. I don't know if they'll do another switch because like that's just more to have to like deal with. Yeah, um, and like Zed's good, Paul's good. It's like, well, are we gonna get rid like seventy five percent of our original roster <laughs> from the start yeah, of the season? That's, that's like kind of seems kind of like. Ooh, that's not good. Like, Man, there's just yeah, like the, teams are not gonna trust that org. To be like, right. I just think having zero in the, the wing there, just with zero in the wing there, it's tempting not to try different pacing with Shawnee and see what happens. It, you know, with Paul X, who is a main AR, like running that kind of like that role there. It's just well, really tempting for a team. Europe. Right, that's the thing. So like, if zero zero can make it happen, then yeah. then I could see the roster change happening again. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. I just think it's pretty likely in the next few weeks to happen especially if they end up losing you know their first or second match here stage two or stage three so um yeah that that's where i'm at with it um otherwise i mean paris it's gotta be fire right i, I think fire's almost surely like i will put it at a 90 percent chance there's a change in the next two weeks I, pretty high i i believe fire is probably benched which is a shame which mm-hmm. is a shame I mean, if there was, if they're going to bench somebody, it'll probably be fire. Um, but I, I mean, Paris didn't do that last year. Like, right. Paris that's the thing. Just doesn't make and that's changes. a debate. They yeah. It's definitely an org. Changes. It's an org debate for it's sure. It's an but org like, debate more than like a team debate. Yeah. My whole thing is just based off what Weskin said about Paris. Mm-hmm. And if, if he's saying that it's going to happen, then it feels pretty freaking likely. So um, we'll see. We'll see. So I guess Who we kind of talked there. Fire? That's Waskin? a good question. I think Saints makes the most sense for sure. Yeah. But who's Theory um, friends with? Is he? He's probably friends with Saints. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and like, and they got classic. I mean, bro, classic Saints. Like, <laughs> that's classic right there. Classic. But uh, rank all seven rookies. Oh, I thought we were gonna do this real quick. Wait, we're gonna try to like we'll try to keep this thing pretty short. But um, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the seven rookies. Of course, that's Neptune, Diamond Con, Venom, Paul, Insight, Standy, and Fire. Well, <laughs> there's eight rookies because Draws is in the mix. Well, Draws is not a rookie because last year he played, sure he played two events. Nah, That's right. I'll let it pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there yes. you go. <laughs> so um, thoughts on these on these guys. Mm-hmm. Does anyone want to go first? Sam, do you want to start? I'll start. Kick us off. Um, so, you know, one of, the, one of the main things I'm sure everyone looks at is their impact on the team when they came in. Was there, did their team turn around? You know, what was it? And it's hard not to say Stanley didn't turn around the rocker. That's fair. So, do you put Sandy first here? I, f- I feel like I am. I think I'm going to put Sandy first. It's not a lot of data to go off of. And right. It's a close race between one and two. Mm-hmm. If, if you know me, I do like data, and we still need to see more from Sandy, obviously. But it's hard to deny how of a turnaround Rocker had. Right. So, I, so I, for I w- me, one would be Sandy. Okay. And I'm surprised you started with number one. You know, usually you want to build up to that. That's fair. That's fine. I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Okay, fire here, here, fire here. Rapid fire your list. Let's rapid fire our list. We'll talk about a few, a few different guys. So, who is just rapid fire one through seven here? If you can do that real quick. Okay. Well, one dandy, two insight, three Paul X, four diamond, five. Neptune, <laughs> six, Venom, seven, Fire. See, that's oh. weird. I think Venom looked way better in this major. He, I mean, he definitely did. Like, he looked definitely I, like, did. Like, he actually kind of scared me. I'm like, he could, might, like, he could, he was, I mean, he's near the top of my list. At least, just based off the major, 
he looked like he really came into his own. I'm like, okay, there's what we're kind of hoping with Venom was he looked really, really good. Yeah. In my opinion. For sure. For sure. So then where would you have him? I mean, it's hard. Like, I hate these lists, especially as like, I've, like, it's so recent, but like, Right, Based on and what it's I saw, contextual to what team they ha- they're on right now and how that could play out. I-, I get what you're saying. If Venom is given the right scenario, like he just got with Hundred Thieves, I think Venom could be like a number one guy. Yeah, that's fair. Wow, but that's did, high praise. But did we see that? But right now, I feel like I mean, and the major. Stan- I think it was there. Like what? I don't know, he seemed like he was very brainy. He was making some amazing plays. I don't know. Maybe him and Slasher I- just were not a good couple but when i I, I still know how you don't see standy and how they performed against the top teams you don't see him i mean yeah yeah like yeah obviously like standy looks really good yeah it's tough to rank like diamond versus paul x now after paul's like last you know last match Mm -hmm. here and and like how they how that end up playing out against 100 t it seems so unfair it's crazy um i mean we we had we didn't even talk about 100 t yet oh my word Mm -hmm. Shoot. Um, a lot to talk about, folks. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would say I would fire off my list. Or Rex, you want to fire off your full seven here real quick? Like just one through seven. All right. I guess I'll go, uh, you know, f- fire seven, uh, Neptune six, um, insight f- five. What? Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, Maybe I'll what? do no. I'll do Paul X five insight four. Oh my word! As an individual three player, three diamond, two venom, one standy. Wait, so why why would insight be lower as an individual player? Because I feel like I mean I feel like we see nothing besides beams from him. Basically, I think he's really good. I think the, all these players are super good. I just feel like if I'm like I don't know if I'm taking a stock in something, I feel like I'm I'm trying to bet on my upward potential here. Like insight looks good. But I feel like they're, I mean, I don't know. I expect more out of Insight. Take that as a compliment. Oh. Take that as like, you have a higher ceiling. I feel like you, you just like buffed Venom super high and then nerfed Insight Did you not see hard. Venom play? Like, I mean, it was a I, different, I, wait, different I mean, being. I did, but did you see Insight and Stanley play? Wait, do, you, do you think yes, that Venom I saw is Insight a European Sandy guy Sandy, who plays on Stanley Toronto? got <laughs> less, like, Stanley was not as noticeable as he was when he first came into the league and now he's like more kind of like he's still playing really well for the team yeah. and all that but like he definitely started middling out I don't know man I just thought he looked really really good in those last few matches I mean he shoots so straight his S&D is in he's so dude, he eats oh. up kills in s and I, I don't know I mean I could see it maybe in like respawn where he's not like the superstar in respawn but like in S&D he's legit I, well so is Cammy Cammy was the one who's legit in S&D yeah, I mean, that's fair. Cammy does crazy work in S&D, and Insight's there, and don't get me wrong, Insight's great, was a good pickup for the team, but, like, and he makes smart plays, but I, I, mean, know, I, I see a right lot now, of upward, in, like, superstar. Sandy Insight are, like, 1A, players. 1B for me right now. Like, you could inter-swap them oh, yeah. uh, for the best rookies. I would say, for, I would also agree, Fire fire 7th, Venom, I would put it 6. Um, You're crazy. Yeah, I, got, I could also put, I could put Venom at, at 5 or 4. I, those Venom, Paul X, and Diamond Con are like you know seven six five for me. Yeah, I actually think Neptune. I actually am pretty positive about Neptune. Uh, moving forward, I I still think he's a really really solid solid player. Thing is, like, he's he gotten has, enough time to where he should have come up a little bit more where he hasn't. Where it's like okay, well I agree, but at the same but time, think about the players that are surrounding him. If you pair him. him with another great Awakening SMG, in skies, yeah, like he has no, great players around him. He another shouldn't. SMG, another dynamic SMG. Like like let's say maybe Stan- maybe. Like let's say Standy replaced Slacked. That I think I think you would see a, a insane Neptune. That's kind of my argument there. Maybe. Um. So D- Diamond Con or a at, dumb one five. Like, like yeah, you know, yeah. Like fair. Neptune is you know kind of the same problems. I think we have shots. is kind of like kind of at points can be pretty dumb. So like it. So I I don't know. But yes, I, I, I see yes. a lot of upward potential in these different players. Like Venom seems like a guy who has a brain on his shoulders, and he seems to really. Have I don't know, come into his own and call it recency bias, whatever you want. But yeah, I, I could see Venom. I mean, I could see Venom, again, ahead of Paul and Diamond Con, depending on how you want, how much weight Everyone's you want. Everyone's so high on Paul sweet. when he first just, came in. Oh, Paul, the number one rookie. All of a sudden now it's like, oh, Raven's got a little bad, and now people aren't right. so high on Paul. It's hard not to he overreact out. to how people good level Toronto out. looked. I mean, but Venom, again, I don't know if he's going to level out. In three weeks, 
there's a world where Toronto's back to being a you know the middling team. There, that's an option, but it's hard to say. So I'll I'll go I'll go Diamond Con five, Neptune three, Insight two, Standy one, <clears throat> Standy one. But it's very very close. Again, we're nitpicking things here. <laughs> Obviously, it depends on the situation with each player and like ranking the odds for rookie of the year would be would I would put Neptune at, at three if I'm ranking the odds for rookie of the year yeah. because of the potential that we just saw with LA Thieves. So I could see Bro, that. I just don't get sense. the, like I get Neptune is great, but like he has not shown us that. He I, has I shown us that. In S and D he's, he's been fantastic. I, I, especially I, recently. I've been in the year. He very well showed us that. I don't I th- know about that. I think Florida, they, they beat phase their first match. How do you not say? And like, he was the one that was going off. Like, but like, again, it's like, but the amount of time he's had, he has not grown into much. And like, again, he's still making crazy things. Like, this is like, I don't know. I just don't get how you're like, that's what I'm saying. Like a change of scenery could do wonders for Neptune. I just don't know like why maybe maybe so high on Venom. But I haven't seen seen the change of scenery happen. So I can't say that. I've just seen the plays he's made. We saw really good plays from Venom in, in like two series this weekend. Yeah. But like. You know, I I, thought, I felt like in a consistent basis on the year, we've seen more upside from Neptune yeah. as a whole. That's kind of where I'm at. But anyway, we, again, this is going to be a really long episode if we don't keep this moving. So, um, do you want to talk, I feel like we need to talk LA Thieves and we need to talk Toronto at least. Like, we, we've kind of like hinted at Toronto, but we haven't like fully gone mm-hmm. on Toronto. So let's spend at least like five to seven minutes talking about these two teams. So LA Thieves, yep. we're talking about Venom right now. <laughs> Thoughts on LA Thieves? Are they legit? Are they a legit top six, seven team now consistently from here on out? With it, they looked very good in, in the matches that we saw from them. Of course, they ended up uh, going on the run and uh, they looked dangerous to say the least. They ended up, they 3 0 Legion. They mm-hmm. beat Thieves 3 2. Then they 3 0 the Subliners in one of the most surprising uh, matches of the whole year. Yeah. And uh, then they went on to lose 3 0 to the Ultra. Thoughts on LA Thieves? I think it's going to come down how seriously can they keep keep it in scrims? I think it's what it's going to come down to. Okay. Like, how serious can they, like, when they go into this, they're having a ton of fun. They Old were vibing. Guys, all the guys are super, you know, fun and like, oh, let's bro out, you know? But like, <laughs> um, you know, let's crush these guys. But like, I don't know if when it comes to scrim time, you know, are they going to be able to make scrims? How, how much can this honeymooning or whatever last? I just, my brain has a hard time wrapping around Kenny as many are. It's just such a weird sight. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. It's weird. Every, no matter what, having the AR in his hands, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, and like, you know, I get the whole J, J Cap comment of, right. you know, roles and everything. And like, he, is, like, he is picking up SMGs pretty regularly yes, and like yes. still doing that. I, off the I'm just saying more of just like a, like a visual where it's this, this roster shouldn't really make sense, but it made sense. It, yeah. They, they're performing. So I don't know how much of that, is is honeymooning to me it almost to me i'm very skeptical about this line, lineup right here i don't right. know if they're the mind bending win is the 3-0 against subliners yes but yeah. they did play three straight checkmates and, mm-hmm. and they looked the thieves looked really good on checkmate when they did play it i yeah. mean they they beat paris 252 203 on it they beat legion they beat paris 3-0 on it in control then they beat uh, the Ravens 3 1 in control, and then they beat the, the subliners in all three matches on checkmate. You yeah. know, so it's like it's hard to say in all the other maps that weren't checkmate, they weren't good. So, except they, they won a Moscow SD 6 4, and they won a raid hard point against London, you know, but it, I don't know. Their map pool is a big problem. I think moving mm-hmm. forward, they're going to have to really put a lot of work in. Oh, yeah, for sure. And teams have really called checkmate like the 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 scrap the scrap map, especially like with S and D and control, where like you know it, it's a little bit more straightforward. Where you just have to attack attack the bomb sites and and play for map control. So I don't know. I'm a little skeptical of LA Thieves still. I definitely wouldn't crown them like a guaranteed top seven team um, moving forward, but they definitely have some upside potential. That's for sure. I feel like they're gonna be an annoying team to play for sure, for sure, for at least for a while. So teams can start getting a better grip on them and, and figure them out. So, um, yeah. Any, anything else to add there, Sam? I mean, like, yeah, pretty I, straightforward. Yeah, I, I guess you you call me cynical of, of this lineup, but it's hard not to say like Kenny did look comfortable in the main area role, and then Draza also looked comfortable with the flex. TJ was popping off at times, and yes, right, yeah. you got TJ and Venom 
a little bit better pacing situation yes. now. So like if, if they can figure each other out with the pacing and keep playing off each other like that, there is a potential yeah. for this team to do really well, which again is just weird seeing Kenny there, but if it works, it works. How do you know how do you yeah, not say it? For it, sure. It, it, for sure. It won't work. All right. So then Toronto in the same note. Is yes. the hype real? Is the hype real with Toronto? We saw Vance make the most unbelievable turnaround mm-hmm. in, in like a two, three week stretch we may have ever seen. Yes. And, uh, you know, he went from being a guy that we were all like this. They might need a roster change here soon mm-hmm. to being like this guy dropped a 1.4 in a series in it, like an eight map series against FaZe. Yep. Like, huh? How is this possible? So thoughts on the ultra thoughts on Kleenex. He looked like an absolute unit. Yeah. Um, Candy. Candy you know, I mean, all of them did it at times yeah. and, and you can't not look that way when you're winning a tournament like that. So no. um, is the format fair? Was, was, is it fair? <laughs> the ultra get to play that many maps in like a pretty quick succession. Mm-hmm. Where are you at with it? Rex lead the way ultra thoughts. Um, I think they definitely were riding high. Um, I think that that really helped them, especially in the phase matchup. I mean, from the comms we heard when they played phase before and they like, it was sad and people were like, that's the saddest comms I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> they that are was a calm ultra. team though. And then like, not even like they like, you knew, they knew they were beat going into it. Then they went into this one and like, you could tell like it was up, much more up and they played way better. Um, are they, just, are they just riding the vibes of an optic win? Like I don't know this, if it's is, the, an optic <laughs> win, but I think they're just riding the <laughs> vibes of like they're winning and they started playing really well. They just had a good day. Um, I I don't like. I think they'll be good. Ultra is also always always impressed me as a I mean, team. We've even talked in modern about warfare, their upside for a while now. Like they always mm-hmm. climb. They always are like this du- team that like it's almost like always the dark horse team is like they're always playing well and they're always like just annoyingly good and you can't quite figure out why right yeah i mean i think a few weeks ago i said something along the lines like if you took out bants and put in like a like a top 10 mm-hmm. smg on that team they would be pretty scary yeah and then bants was like well i'll just be the top 10 I'll smg, the top 10 SMG. <laughs> well like i mean bants is then, a part of that symmetry like chemistry of that yeah. team as well i don't know if you could re- just replace bants with top smg and then he's now the high, he's, he, he's like, now the highest earning eu player of all time uh, he just passed zero as the highest earning EU player of all time. Nice, yeah, Congrats it's pretty crazy. Bands, but yeah, I don't know. I'm always, I'm really impressed with Ultra as an org. You can say what you want about the org, but like the way right, they they've organized this COD team from the beginning of like, oh for sure, tons of subs and the way they climbed near the end of Modern Warfare, like they're a pretty like solid team. It was like you had to punch a brick wall to try and beat them, and then even now, now they just won this major, like. They're yeah. always they're always a threat, always a threat. Ultra, so I really respect that about them. Mm-hmm. Um, Man, it's just crazy the transformation that Kleenex and Bants had in mm-hmm. in one weekend. Yeah, they 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 went from like looking like mid. You know, it's like you have some real questions about them yeah. and yeah. what can Bants be? It's like oh man, and then now suddenly like they're unstoppable. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. So then, does this do, do the performances stay like this though? Like, Not that like, high, but it could get back to that level. But teams, like the X factors now, yeah, that's they the they're not going to be able to keep this up for months and months. Mm-hmm. They're playing no. cracked out of their minds, right? Yeah. The, there was there was something different on that day, and like I definitely, I mean, I think everyone's experienced like those days where it's just it's working for you, mm-hmm. and uh, you go on a run, and you're like, all right, the, you know, us as a unit are playing good. We haven't lost anything today. Mm-hmm. We're playing great. Like it just clicks on certain days, and it definitely clicked on Championship Sunday for him. Yeah. It, it, you know, but they were playing good S and they had to play good COD to get there. And again, they were playing incredible S and D, and that and that's yeah. it matters. Yeah. yeah. And and then you rematched against FaZe, a team that they had already played once, you know, in the first round. And obviously, FaZe underestimated them again. Yeah. After you know, FaZe was like, "We beat these guys three one. We we weren't even trying when we beat them three one the first time. Now yeah. we're gonna go into the final. We're gonna smoke them. It's gonna be like, why are we even playing this? And uh, you know." I was surprised that Phased banned. Uh, they banned Raid, hmm. and they were they 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 played Express after getting body on Express the last two times they played it. I was pretty surprised about that. And then you go in and they get six owed on Express in the grand finals, and then they're, you're so deflated you end up losing a checkmate hard point. Like you should not be losing a checkmate hard point if you're Phased. <laughs> They're currently one and four in stage two on Express S and D. Why are you playing Express against Ultra? Yeah, 
make no sense. I, again, they've been pretty good on raid. Like mm-hmm. raid has been very solid on raid, and they've had some really impressive maps against good S and D teams on yeah. raid this year. And like the fact that they weren't willing to play it against ultra is a testament to how good they think ultra is at raid. Yeah. But uh, I'm surprised they're willing to play express on the other side of the thing. So there are some really interesting veto conversations this weekend and we can go on and on about that. But uh, if we go on and on, we will be, this podcast will never end. Yeah. So real quick, (laughs) our last thing here, we're going to talk more about ultra and thieves and and everything in, in our predictions next week. Mm -hmm. So uh, be on lookout for that. But all right, real quick, we want to play a little bit of a game here. So we may as well just make this a little segment and just say we're playing a game. So uh, let's play a game. Let's play a game. Game time, fellas. <laughs> All right. That's hit, the drop. That's the drop. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we're just going to play a little game of, of uh, picking the, the, the groups real quick. It's going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to do like group A, group B, and do our little predictions for what we think Ultra and Phase are going to select. And then again, it's a selection show. So let's say Ultra picks the gorillas then the gorillas have to pick and we'll go from there we'll just go in a circle here so mm-hmm. all right sam you're the ultra rex your face here so sam pick who's gonna join or so sam pick who's gonna join phase in group b mm-hmm. oh man are we, are we picking based off who we think they'll pick yes that is interesting it is interesting who do you think ultra picks to join phase in group b that gets really spicy it, it <laughs> really, really quick because again there could be some unreal groups Oh, well, yeah. wait, hold on. Is this how the group stage works, or is it still based off points? No, no, it's, yeah, the it's, groups is based off the is, is, is how groups how teams pick it. Is based off the major. It's based off the major how? results. Okay, what? Like, like it's based off like, the points like or the, the group, major results. Who 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 starts the two picking is oh, the major it, results. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. But but then after that, it goes by who got picked. Yes. Yeah, right. I know that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Ultra picks first. Mm-hmm. So Sam, who does Ultra send? So so it's interesting group because B. you know I'm thinking Dallas or Rocker here, which Ultra three won to both teams. So it's like they they wouldn't mind maybe maybe in their minds they wouldn't mind playing either, but oh, man, it's so like who do you pick to go to the other side? Right, it's tough. It's I mean, tough. I there's no way to really know. It's more no. of a fun game. I think we can kind of just yeah. like rattle rattle yeah. it off pretty I'm, quick here. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say Dallas. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say they're so, gonna send Dallas over to phase. All right, so now Rex, your phase, and you're mm. choosing between who, what, who do, do I not want in this group with us? Who are I mean, you sending? Part over of me to wants to side? say gorillas. Um, <laughs> <What? laughs> that's not that would realistic. be comedy, but that would be dooming them to have yeah. the group of alter utter death. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, at least, uh, I guess it might as I mean. Optic or Minnesota, right? Yes. So if you're FaZe, who do you not want in your group? Could you imagine if FaZe, Dallas, and Optic are all in the same group? Yeah, which would be really fun. Um, group B is guaranteed to be the group of Dallas. I'll, I'll mean, send Rocker. Really? Oh, jeez. <laughs> do you think FaZe would really do that and, and let Optic be in their group? Um, yeah. I really? Don't I, don't, I don't think FaZe really cares too much. Josh, so now I'm playing. picking for okay. Dallas, but yeah, I, I'm sending Optic okay. over to Group A for sure. So, yeah. um, pick subliners. Yeah. So now that gets really interesting. So now the Rocker are sending, are sending somebody down to Group B. Mm-hmm. So who do, who does the Rocker not right. want to so, play? So the Rocker, you're looking at that, and you're like, okay, you know, this gets a little spicy. Do, mm-hmm. do you do the? Are do they? What do they think about the subliners? Mm-hmm. You know, where are they at with the surge? The surge. Who else could that be for him? You know, and that's pretty interesting. So part of me thinks they're going to be pretty down on subliners with being three would twice. So I'm I'm honestly considering they they pick Surge to go to the other. Really? Is that crazy? I feel like they. I don't know. Do you think they'd pick the subliners still just because of the? Yeah, I think they'd pick subliners. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I I don't think Surge. Yeah, would be I think they pick subliners. Yeah. So then again, now it would be Optics' turn. This sends someone to group B again. Well, Optic. See, the last time that's actually interesting. Optic beat Surge. So I get a pick. Okay, so I'm Optic. Who do I yeah, send? Yeah, you're Optic. Over? Optic's um, three O'd Optic three O'd Surge and then three one surge the last two times they played. I will I'm send not necessarily... Los Angeles Thieves. That is that is actually interesting. That's, interesting. that's fair. I think that's what they would do too, honestly. So I don't think they're worried about Surge being in their group. Wow, now, that gets very interesting. So now mm-hmm. subliners are looking at it, and uh, who's left here? We got 
Mutineers, which could be interesting. Uh, gorillas. They're, they're sending gorillas to the other side, right? Do you think so? I, I mean, I don't know if they want to play gorillas. Over <laughs> Surge, you think? Yeah, may, Over Mutineers? I don't, maybe. Ah, I would say. say Mutineers. If you're Surge, I mean, the Subliners, yeah, they've, they've had some struggles against a lot of people lately. If I'm Subliners. I would send Surge. You send Surge over there. Surge. Yeah. I'll go with Surge. Okay, so now, who's up? Thieves. Thieves. And Rex is choosing this? Yes. Rex, who do the I'm thieves? I'm choosing. Thieves will send, send over to their side. Questions, um, questions. The Mutineers. Mutineers, LAG. Mutineers. Mutineers. Kind of wanted to say LAG, but. There's four teams left. Now Surge is picking. Yes. And uh, we're looking at Paris. LAG. LAG. London. LAG, LAG for sure. Yeah. LAG for sure. And then Mutineers between London and Paris. Mutineers between London and Paris? Yeah. They lost to Paris, didn't they? Paris will be last. Yeah, picked. yeah, they lost to Paris. They lost to Paris. They'll send. They'll send. They'll Paris. send Paris. No way. No. They way. lost to Paris three one. But they don't no. want to play them. So, so, so then, just uh, London. All right. So Group A would be Ultra Rocker Optic Surge Mutineers London. Group B would be Phase Dallas Subliners. That's juicy. That is LA juicy. Thieves. L A G Paris. That is an insane group. Pretty, nah, group yeah, B is pretty insane. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I don't I mean, know if also, that's how it's gonna play out. That's pretty intense. But yeah. like with with also the like surges uprising, rocker ultra, oh, and for optic, sure. And then I if mean, Mutineers make a roster change, and I suddenly mean, Group A could be both, both groups both, are nuts. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the league's insane. But yeah, there yeah. it is. So uh, that said, um, it's pretty interesting. Drop your comments down below on that one. Mm -hmm. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to think. And then let's go into intelligent or relevant. Let's go. Keep, keep on rolling, folks. Ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Alrighty. The ability to speak doesn't make you intelligent. Thoughts here, Sam. Are the people intelligent? What was the question? Here we go. Pulling it up as we speak. The question that was posed. In your opinion, who makes the most sense as Mutineers fourth? If you think someone else, comment below. Only 81 votes, so not too many votes. So, I did, so, uh, yeah, I should have retweeted hey, it. Hey, it's okay. Um, so there could be some variance here, but um, the options were as follows. Havoc. Saints, John, or Decimate. So, those are the four options. Do you think more people wanted someone else? And the question was, who, who, who makes you... the most sense as Mutineers mm, fourth? So, okay, that is a little vague. Mm -hmm. So, that could leave some room for interpretation. Yeah. I, I think people will say, I think John is kind of like the public I, thought it's there, right? Be John. I mean, John or Havoc. Havoc's the only one that has news about him. So, that makes me think yeah. people are just kind of going to ride that wave. See one piece of news and kind of ride with it and say Havoc. I, All right. I it's think Havoc it's or John. John. No one's saying yeah. Saints or Decimate. Yeah. So I'm going to vote for Decimate because I think that's probably the lowest. Okay. By far and away, 39% John. Okay. Uh, second, 24% is Havoc. Okay. 21% Saints, 16% Decimate. That's fair. All right. Intelligent. Intelligent. So, Oh, yeah, I would say I was intelligent. The people it's, are intelligent uh, today. It's big-brained intelligence. Any comments down below? So, two comments, so I'll read them both for both of y'all. Naughty TF. I'd most like to see Havoc, but the best player for the role is Saints. He's been the best SMG in NA Challengers and deserves a I'd spot like to see Saints. more than Havoc, who wasn't chosen for the team the first time for a reason. That's not a bad take. Second one from Munchie902. feel like Nato would be a great fit. Oh, also feel like Saints. he'd be good at molding Neptune as a player. I so like it. So that's a good that's a good um thought there too. Also pair with Neptune. Texas Formal, I don't know if you saw that. His Twitter account got banned. What? Texas Formal? What <laughs> happened? He, he he his his on his other account, he's been trying to free Texas Formal. So oh, oh. shout out Texas Formal. Free Texas free Formal. Free Texas Formal. What did he's he do? but nothing but support. Wait, oh, what did he get banned so for? Sad. I don't know. I don't know clues. So hopefully it's not being horrible. Nothing but bad. I the free Texas Formal. Oh because he, he caught the short end of the stick. But guys, this very well could uh, have been the longest episode of all time. It's a little bit hard to tell because of our interview that we had. I'm pretty so, sure it's guaranteed to be. Is it? I think we had like an hour 50 something before. 
Oh, one oh, time. Halloween? Okay. So yeah, it'll, it's going to be very be close. close, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the pod. It's definitely been a good one. It's been an interesting one to say the fun. least. It's been a blast. And so if you guys did drop a comment down below on YouTube, drop a review on Apple podcast. We definitely like reading them as you guys heard at the beginning of the episode. But as always guys, I'm your boy Savage Lee. To my right is Bash underscore BO3. To our farthest right, per usual, is Rex Shady Nero. And guys, this has been the best three Call of Duty esports podcast. And we will see you next time. We out.